How impressive is China's desert photovoltaic technology? To put it this way, the technology that Europe and America spent 10 years and billions of euros on and failed to accomplish has been successfully developed by China. Not only has China developed desert photovoltaic technology, but it has also used photovoltaics to control desertification, desert animal husbandry, and desert tourism. I'm not exaggerating, there are precedents for all of this. In 2009, Munich Re, a European insurance giant, and more than 10 other companies developed an ambitious energy plan called the Desertic Initiative, which aimed to build a massive solar power station in the Sahara Desert and then construct several transmission lines to provide power to the entire Europe. This photovoltaic plan was dubbed the world's most ambitious green energy plan, but it failed in just five years. It's not just Europe, in 2013, President Obama of the United States also launched the Power Africa Plan, which aimed to invest $7 billion in energy facilities, including photovoltaics, in African countries south of the Sahara within five years. However, this plan has yet to produce significant results. In contrast, the Kubuki Desert in China was recognized by the United Nations as a global decertification control and ecological economic model zone because China not only built a photovoltaic power station but also used photovoltaics to green the desert and improve the ecology. Many European and American experts have come here to learn. So the question is, why is desert photovoltaics so difficult? Why can't Europe and America do it despite spending so much money? while China can create a world model out of it. Today, let's talk about China's exclusive technology, desert photovoltaic technology. Doesn't the desertic project in Europe sound absurd? However, it does have scientific basis, deserts are rich in resources, and countries all over the world are eager to develop them. In 2017, Wang Chuanfu, the founder of BYD, publicly stated that if 1% of China's desert area were used for photovoltaic power generation, it could meet the country's entire electricity demand. The American technology tycoon Musk shares the same opinion. In 2019, he tweeted that if the 10,000 square miles of desert in the United States were used to build solar power plants, it could meet the entire country's electricity demand. Most of Europe's land resources are of high quality, with little desert. Therefore, they set their sights on the Sahara Desert. Firstly, the Sahara Desert is only 15 kilometers away from Europe, making it feasible to build solar power plants in the Sahara to supply power to Europe. Secondly, the lighting conditions in the Sahara Desert are excellent. It covers an area of 9.4 million square kilometers, making it the world's largest desert, and it is sparsely populated. According to NASA's estimates, if all of the solar resources in the Sahara Desert were used for electricity generation, it would produce 79 TW of electricity. What does that mean? It means that if all human activities were powered by electricity from now on, we would have enough to use until the end of this century. Munich invited experts to become analysts, and then created a detailed plan, inviting 12 European companies to participate, including banks, multinational corporations, photovoltaic and energy companies, etc., as well as countries around the Sahara Desert. The total investment was expected to be over $500 billion. In short, at that time, Europe almost united most of its strength to do this. This huge lineup and plan also shocked the entire energy industry, and was called the most ambitious green energy project in the world at the time. Unfortunately, the plan failed after only five years. The main reason was that they underestimated the difficulty of desert solar energy. However, China succeeded and did more and better than Western countries, and even became a global model. Let me show you a group photo. Do you think the photovoltaic power station in the Gobi Desert is covered with solar panels on bare sand? In fact, under China's desert photovoltaic power stations, not only is there green vegetation, but there are also chickens, ducks, sheep, and even farmers planting Chinese wolfberries. This miracle also caught the attention of the United Nations. In 2014, the United Nations Environment Program personally visited the Kubuki Desert in China and determined it as the Global Desert Ecological Economic Demonstration Zone. 
The Kubuki Desert was originally the seventh largest desert in China, with rare human activity and a very harsh environment. However, with China's efforts, it has become a characteristic area for breeding and tourism. Now, nearly 10 years have passed, and China has turned the Kubuki Desert into a model for photovoltaics and is ready to promote it to the whole country and even the world. In May 2022, China announced that it will build a wind and photovoltaic power generation base with a total installed capacity of 450 million kilowatts on the Gobi Desert, with a total installed capacity equivalent to 23 Gorges dams. In short, it is not an exaggeration to say that China's desert photovoltaic technology is leading the world. So how did China achieve so much more and better than Western countries, despite investing so much? The answer is not complicated, it is a difference in thinking. When China does photovoltaics in the desert, it is not just for photovoltaics, but also to develop the entire desert industry. In the early days, China's photovoltaic projects were relatively simple, just building a large photovoltaic power station in one place, and then sending the electricity out, similar to the European Saharan project, purely for profit. However, Chinese photovoltaic companies also use China's decades of experience in afforestation, planting trees, and vegetation around the power stations to alleviate the problem of desert dust. After a while, the workers noticed a strange phenomenon. Weeds grew especially fast under photovoltaic panels, easily blocking them and slowing down their power generation efficiency. It was later discovered that the photovoltaic panels were causing this. During the day, the panels blocked the sunlight, causing water in the sand beneath them to evaporate more slowly. At night, water vapor in the air condensed on the panels and flowed down to the ground below, making the soil beneath the panels moister than elsewhere. Furthermore, this piece of land had been treated with a Chinese herbal grid planting method that could effectively lock in moisture, so the vegetation beneath the panels grew better and better over time. More vegetation meant more moisture and thus a virtuous cycle of weed growth began in the photovoltaic area. This miraculous discovery stunned scientists. China had developed many solutions to supply water to deserts, but had never been able to solve the problem of water retention. Water brought from thousands of miles away would quickly evaporate in the desert. If these glass panels could efficiently convert water vapor, wouldn't that solve the problem of desert water that had plagued humanity for thousands of years? Scientists began to ponder how to develop the technology for photovoltaic water production. However, the enthusiasm of photovoltaic companies was not high because more weeds meant lower power generation efficiency, and if the panels were used to absorb water, how many people would be needed to weed the area? At this point, something magical happened. Local herders saw the abundance of grass and often drove their sheep to graze there. At first, the management of the photovoltaic power station was afraid that the sheep would damage the panels and usually drove them out. But then an engineer suggested that if the photovoltaic panels were installed higher and reinforced, the sheep could graze beneath them. He persuaded the power station to invite the herders' sheep back and after a period of experimentation, the results were unexpectedly good. The sheep showed no interest in the hard panels, and the overall damage rate was much better than expected. The herders could also earn extra income by grazing their sheep. Grazing not only solved the weed problem and ensured the photovoltaic efficiency but also brought an additional income for the herders, which was truly a win-win situation. Soon, this model was promoted to other photovoltaic factory areas and even to other desert regions. More and more photovoltaic industries started to develop subsidiary industries, and local residents not only raised sheep but also other livestock such as chickens, ducks, and geese. In some areas, high-profit crops were also planted. In the Tenga Desert in Ninxia, the local photovoltaic power station had turned sand dunes into grassland. Cattle and sheep grazed beneath the photovoltaic panels, and wolfberries were even grown, making it a miracle of desert China. China's photovoltaic industry not only doesn't compete with local residents for water, but can even solve water problems for them. This desert transformation technology has caught the attention of countries around the world, and many scientists have been sent to China to investigate. However, this is still not the limit of the photovoltaic industry. 
If the problem of producing water with photovoltaics is solved, it is possible to create lakes, streams, and other phenomena here. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.